the Galactic Concordia Hall was buzzing. It wasn't often that the representatives of a thousand species gathered for an emergency session. The topic of the day? Humanity. Again. At the center of the hall, a massive hologram displayed Earth. Around it, holograms of various human spacecraft loomed like hunting beasts. The ships were crude by galactic standards, their edges sharp and functional, lacking the smooth elegance of Concordian designs. But their engines, their engines were the problem. The being resembling a giant crystalline squid floated into the center of the chamber. Its voice resonated telepathically across the hall. Delegates, began Chrysath, a respected scientist from the Overex Collective. We have reviewed the data thoroughly. What we are witnessing from humanity is an abomination of science. There was an audible murmur of agreement, though some delegates remained silent, their mandibles or equivalent appendages twitching nervously. Everyone had heard stories about humanity's unpredictability. A grizzled Threxian warrior clicked his mandibles in annoyance. Get to the point, Overix. What exactly are the humans doing? Chrysus crystalline form dimmed, a sign of discomfort. They have developed faster than light travel. Uh, the murmurs turned to an uproar. The sleek and calculated Concordian species took centuries, sometimes millennia, to develop FTL technology. The very notion that humans, an upstart species barely out of their gravity well, could achieve it was preposterous. Preposterous, bellowed Darnus of the Velcorin. Their civilization is less than 10,000 cycles old. How could they have achieved FTL? The hologram shifted, showing a rudimentary blueprint of a human FTL drive. It was cobbled together, its components not optimized for stability or efficiency. The design seemed almost reckless. It is not how they achieved it, Christoph said gravely, but why. The humans did not develop this technology through disciplined scientific pursuit. They, they built it out of sheer spite. The hall went silent. Spite? asked a soft voice from the delegation of the Floraxes, a species known for their serene and deliberate demeanor. Chrysith hesitated before answering. Yes. Our intelligence intercepts indicate that a prominent human physicist once declared that faster than light travel was impossible. This statement angered a group of human scientists. Their response was unorthodox. The hologram shifted again, showing video footage of human scientists in their natural habitat. A dimly lit lab cluttered with coffee cups, whiteboards covered with chaotic scrawls, and several half-eaten sandwiches. A group of disheveled humans argued over equations, one of them slammed their hands on a table and shouted. Impossible? I'll share them impossible. The Threxian warrior let out a low growl. You mean to tell us that their motivation was a challenge? Yes, Chrysath replied, their voice tinged with disbelief. They built an FTL prototype within a mere two decades. The first test succeeded, though barely. Another delegate, a feathery Berithian, let out a trill of astonishment. But that's impossible. The gravitational harmonics alone require centuries of refinement. The hologram displayed the first human FTL test ship, the Defiance. It was little more than a glorified tin can with oversized engines. The footage showed the ship vanishing in a brilliant flash of blue light, only to reappear moments later. The humans aboard celebrated wildly, throwing papers and shouting incoherently. They didn't refine anything, Chrysath said. They brute-forced their way through every theoretical limitation. The hall erupted again, this time with panic. They've defied every known principle of science, screeched a cavalin, their tentacles flailing. They're unhinged, added a Zernic delegate, whose gelatinous form quivered in alarm. The Threxian warrior's mandibles clicked thoughtfully. This explains much. Their ships are faster than ours, but they burn through resources at an absurd rate. And their engines, so unstable. Yes, Chrysath said, 
their crystalline form flickering. Their FTL technology is unsustainable by our standards, but their species seems willing to risk annihilation at every step. A hologram of recent human FTL routes appeared. Red dots marked points where their ships had miscalculated, ending up dangerously close to black holes or neutron stars. Yet, every single time, the humans survived. It is as if they thrive on chaos, Griseth concluded. They view danger not as a deterrent, but as a challenge. Before the debate could continue, a sharp alarm echoed through the hall. A Concordian AI's voice announced, Attention, delegates, a human delegation has arrived. The hall fell silent once more. A doorway slid open, and three humans strode in. Their leader was a tall man with sharp eyes and an easy grin. His uniform was less polished than those of the Concordian species, but it exuded a sense of practicality. Beside him was a woman with an intense gaze, holding a data pad, and a younger man who looked like he hadn't slept in days. Greetings, said the tall man, his voice carrying a mix of confidence and amusement. I'm Captain James Holt. These are Dr. Elena Vasquez and Dr. Tom Carter. The Concordian delegates stared. The humans didn't bow or display any traditional signs of deference. They just stood there, grinning. Chriseth floated closer. You are here to explain yourselves? Captain Holton nodded. We heard you were curious about our FTL program. Figured we'd give you the inside scoop. Chrysoth hesitated. You mean to tell us? You knowingly disregarded centuries of scientific caution. Dr. Vasquez stepped forward, her voice sharp. Caution's a luxury we couldn't afford. The Concordian species had millennia to figure this stuff out. We didn't. Earth's resources are finite, and the clock's always ticking. So, yeah, we cut some corners. Cut some corners? The Velcoran delegate hissed. You've built engines that could collapse entire systems if they malfunction? Dr. Carter finally spoke up, his voice tired but defiant. And yet, they haven't. Funny how that works. The hall erupted into chaos again. The humans stood there, unbothered, as accusations flew. Finally, Captain Holton raised a hand. Listen, I get it. You're upset because we didn't follow your rules. But humanity's strength has never been about following rules. It's about breaking them when they don't make sense. The Threxian warrior leaned forward. And what happens when your recklessness destroys you? Holt grinned. Then we'll fix it. That's what we do. We screw up, we adapt, and we keep going. You've all spent so much time avoiding failure that you've forgotten how to deal with it. Dr. Vasquez stepped up again, this time addressing the entire hall. You all think we're insane because we do things differently. But that's the point. Every species here spent thousands of years perfecting their technology before taking the next step. We didn't have that luxury, so we may do. And, Carter added, we proved it's possible. Isn't that what science is about? Pushing boundaries? Asking what if? Chrysath's crystalline body shimmered. But your methods are unsustainable. You're playing with forces you barely understand. Dr. Vasquez smirked. So were your ancestors when they first harnessed fire. The difference is, we're just faster at figuring it out. The delegates murmured, some reluctantly nodding. The human's logic was crude but effective. Captain Holden stepped forward. Here's the thing. You can criticize us all you want, but you can't deny the results. Humanity has FTL. We're out there exploring, learning, and yeah, maybe making a few mistakes along the way. But we're not stopping. And if that scares you... He let the words hang in the air. Well, uh... Maybe it should. The Concordian Council debated for hours after the humans left. Some argued for containment, others for collaboration. In the end, the Council reached a decision. Humanity would be allowed to remain in the Concordian Alliance but their methods would be closely monitored. The humans, of course, found this hilarious. Back aboard their ship, 
Captain Holton clinked a coffee mug against Dr. Vasquez's. Cheers to being the galaxy's biggest headache. Carter yawned. <laughs> you think they'll ever get used to us? Vasquez grinned. <laughs> Doubt it, but that's half the fun. As the ship prepared to jump to its next destination, its engines hummed with an unstable, almost defiant energy. For humanity, the impossible was just another problem to solve. And the galaxy was starting to understand that nothing was truly impossible, not when humans were involved.